Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to uh, like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Then come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It is Saturday, June 22nd. We are in day six of week 25 uh, from the book, the Bible Promise Book Devotional for Women. And our focus for week 25 is anger. Our uh, devotion today is entitled Handling Anger Properly. Yes, we all need this. Our scripture comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 26, out of the NIV, and it reads, Is your, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. So this is the be angry and sin not, which I think is out of the King, King James. So in your anger, do not sin. All right, you can be angry. Angry is an emotion or anger is an emotion, but we're not supposed to sin. All right, let's get into this. If you grew up in a home where you were exposed to constant angry outbursts, you might have, a, have difficulty believing that there's ever an acceptable time to express anger. Some Christians even doubt that believers should feel sad but like happiness, anger and sorrow are valid emotions. They're part of what we experience in life and what makes us human beings. It's, our emotions are a gift from the Lord. To everything, there is a season, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn. Okay, those are all part of Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 4 out of the King James. Now, in certain circumstances... Anger is an appropriate response. Paul knew that all believers would experience it at times, and he just wanted to be sure that they handled it properly. So his first advice was, in your anger, do not sin. Don't get carried away with rage. Godly anger is a catalyst for change. But human temper tantrums don't accomplish God's purposes. Look at James chapter 1 verse 20. Paul's second piece of advice was, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Deal with the situation, express your anger, work through the issues, then let your anger go. Don't let it continue smoldering inside for months or years. Even if all the issues aren't resolved immediately, God often needs time to work things out, okay? Remember, he is a good God. He doesn't bulldoze over the top of our will. Our free will to choose is one of his gifts. He wants us to choose to do the right thing. Now, if you have an angry situation happen, something that stirs your anger, and it involves another person, you can't let your anger fester while that person is working through whatever issues triggered the anger in you to start with. You have to express your anger appropriately and then let it go and then let God work on that person. Okay, it's not going to it's not going to be resolved in one day, but you're not supposed to allow your anger to fester, smolder, create a bitter root, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. God does need time because he doesn't bulldoze over our own personal will. And when you have other people involved, they have a personal will that God respects also. Does that make any sense at all? You are responsible for your own reactions. And when God says to be angry and sin not, in your anger, do not sin, you are responsible for that. Don't sin. Now, the other person also has the same responsibility. If they're angry and they are in sin, let God deal with them about that. But you can't say, okay, they're in sin, so I'm going to be in sin, and that's my excuse. It's their fault, not mine. No. You choose how you react and how you respond. And one person's sin does not make your sin okay. They did it, so I'm going to do it. No. You are responsible one-on-one -on -one between you and the Lord. He told you what he expects you to do. With his help, you can. He'll help you. He'll be with you in trouble. You call on him, you allow his Holy Spirit to transform you and give you the strength 
that you need in every circumstance you face, and he'll do it. All right, time to pray. Lord, we just thank you that your word clearly shows that you can get us through any circumstance. You would not put forward a standard for us to follow that you would not help us to adhere to. So when you tell us and charge us in our anger, do not sin. And we thank you for the Apostle Paul, Lord. You spoke through him to lead and guide us. Thank you for that. We know that you can keep us in the situations when we cry out to you for help. You can keep us from sin in the midst of our anger so that we can affect change instead of pull a human temper tantrum. Lord, thank you that in the times when we are tempted to carry a grudge or to mope or to act out when we're angry, you are there to help us. Help us to deal with any irritations in a more healthy and godly manner, instead of allowing it to trigger us into sin. Thank you, Father, for helping us. Help us, Father, to always turn to you instead of satisfy the flesh in the midst of those moments. And thank you for your mercy and grace when we fall short. We give you all the glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I do hope you decide to like and subscribe and <clears throat> click the notification bell. Then come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. Uh, I'm going to be having some friends over today for lunch. Uh, my DAR friends, we're going through our members course and it is going to be fantastic. I always look forward to their fellowship and we learn so much and have such a good time together. So God bless you all. And I hope you have a wonderful, productive Saturday. Bye until next time.